Hey YouTube, this is Southern Purple One. Today I'm going to talk about uh, something that we talked about last Saturday. Uh, last Saturday I, we got everyone together that's in our proper group, as in the inner sanctuary group. Not the community of all these people I'm trying to network with, but my inner core. And um, it could be anywhere from uh, 22, uh, maybe up to 26 people coming to my place. My place is small. So I have to do a lot of work to get it ready for that amount of people. Um, the people in the group are, are willing to help me, so that is a big plus. Most of these people that are coming are family, so it's it's hard to tell them no. And everyone that is coming uh, is, a, is a hardcore prepper. Now there are a few family members um, of a friend that might be coming, and if they're not prepping, then that family or whoever brings them has to prep for and we call those tag-alongs and as long as our group our inner group knows who's coming and not coming um, th this makes things a lot better so you don't have any surprises uh, in a crisis situation uh, 10 extra people don't come because that will definitely uh, pit a lot of people together because there's going to be a limited amount of resources so we, we met Saturday and we're going to be meeting a lot more frequent to, to iron everything out. I have a lot of work to do here. I've done a lot of work, but still, um, with with that amount of people coming, the only thing that's really gonna save us is if a few have campers. One has an awesome fifth wheel camper, so that's gonna alleviate some problems with uh, living conditions and, and living space. We talked a lot about things on Saturday. It, it's hard for me because I don't really wanna say a lot of things because uh, you know, for privacy of the other people, they're not on YouTube, but I'm going to talk a lot of general things. Let's talk about food. So, if you're going to have a group, food is an important part. That's a resource that's very important. You're going to have to plan how much food are you guys going to stock, just so one person doesn't stock a month and one stocks a year, um, so you have no issues. Everything has to be the same. So we have a, a picked in our group a, a, a lady that is very, very detail-oriented. Without a doubt, she is the right person for the job. So th by this Saturday, or this weekend, I have to give her a, a list of my resources so we can look at that as a group and say, hey, wow, we're, we got so much of this, we don't need any more of that, but we're very, very low on these items. So it's important. Um, Let's talk about food. How are we going to work this? Say we have 20 people come to this place. If we have no electricity and the power grid is down, there is a lot of work involved in cooking for 20 people three meals a day. Uh, more than most people think. It's going to be very hard to do. The food. We have come up with, everyone brings their food. Hopefully we're all really close to each other on the amounts of food and the kinds of food. What we're going to do is we're going to store the food and then to make it fair because you don't want to eat out of one person's food because then their food is gone and if the crisis either gets alleviated or, or we need to move or people decide to go somewhere else and if they take their food then whoever food we ate they're out so for all fairness what we'll do is for that week uh, the person that's in charge of the cooking meal you need to appoint someone now they don't have to be the person that cooks every meal they're the person to make sure that meal is planned out um, that meal is nutritious for the for the people and provides enough calories so that person's like the chief kitchen person that is their kitchen um, they can make sure it's a wise use of resources because we're going to cook one meal for breakfast lunch and supper we're not going to have each family go into the kitchen prepare a meal that's wasteful you're going to have a lot more dirty dishes to wash uh, you're going to have to have the fuel to cook all those individual meals. So cooking one meal for 20 people is a lot easier than cooking five meals. Uh, much better use of resources. So that's how we're gonna, we're gonna do it. Now let's talk about the food. We're gonna simply, for that week, the person that's in charge of the food, they are going to go and take what they need from each person, an even amount. So, you know, everyone's going to give up a can of rice, everyone's going to give up some wheat, uh, some fruit, and you can mix it up. You know, one person you can take some dehydrated apples, the other one you can take some peaches, 
just to make sure it's fair. So that food will be then taken and put in the kitchen. That food is to be used for that week to cook for all those people. That way it's fair. So if three months into the crisis, the crisis is over, very simple. You have your food, you take your food with you. Uh, there's no like, oh, you ate all my food and I don't have any. Makes it very, very fair. This is an issue I'm debating with. Let's talk about some special foods. Um, Yoder's bacon, everybody knows what Yoder's bacon is, the best thing in a can. I can't survive the end of the world without bacon. Uh, so let's say someone stocked, I've stocked probably 30 or 40 cans of this. This is an awesome product. Let's say somebody, all the other people don't stock Yoder's bacon because it is a little bit expensive. What are we going to do in that situation? Do I take and share my Yoder's bacon? I don't have an answer for that, but most of them are family or close friends, so I probably would. But is that the fairest thing to do? See, I spent a lot of money on my Yoder's bacon, and I need it to survive the end of the world. But that's that's a question. How about the processed cheese? Awesome product. Butter. And how about those nice extra uh, pick-me-ups? Brownie mix that will store a long time. These are all special foods. Um, for me, it's a box of tea. I'm a tea fanatic, sweet tea fanatic. I need my tea. Uh, that's my uh, only really bad vice in this world, and I will never give it up. So I have stocks of tea for myself. Uh, yes, I can share some, but if 20 people start drinking my tea, my two-year supply of tea has drastically reduced by a huge amount. But that is why we're doing these lists, we can see. And then we can talk about it. These high dollar expensive food, you know, these foods are a lot more expensive than rice and beans and oatmeal. So making that uh, master list to see what we have and talk about the special things. Now, let's say we have someone that has a special diet. We have one person that has a little bit special diet. Um, we need to accommodate that and that person needs to make sure they store enough. We also need to work with the people in the kitchen preparing that meal so it's done right um, and that person can stay on that diet they're, they're used to. Uh, they, they stay away from a lot of wheat products so that's very important because for us we store a lot of wheat for making bread and other things. So I am high speed forward on getting my group uh, ready in the sense of Every person in that group, um, we're going to have it planned out to the exact spot where they would sleep in a crisis situation. Everything is going to be taken care of in the sense of every detail. Uh, that logistical coordinator that we have, um, she is going to be very important in, in making sure there's no huge holes in our in our plan. Yes, I'm being. I have a sense of urgency, just because I need to get this plan finalized. Um, and then we can do other things as a group. But logistical is very important. Your food is very important. I'm gonna do a video on cooking the amount of food. I heat with wood. It, totally, this my whole house cabin is totally heated with this wood stove. I use a lot of wood. Some people might not realize that and they think that little pile out back is gonna be sufficient. Yeah, that's sufficient on a cold day to warm your house up. But if you're using your furnace and that's running 24 hours a day to, to maintain your house, in a grid down situation, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. You're going to be consuming so much more wood. So right now, think logistics. Do you have enough? And if you have a group coming or people coming to your house, how are you going to make it fair? How are you going to feed them all? Thanks for watching.